Hi, Mixtresses and Mixters. This is Mixtress Ray. You're watching Mixtress Video, and we are doing a very, very unfair comparison today. Um, this is Margaret Peterson Tarot, as you can see. <laughs> Look at this box. It's so beat up, but it was brand new. But it's so beat up, which is fine. I'm fine with that. Got no problems with that. Um, and this is Cosmic Tribe. Obviously, you can see by the title. Like, I don't know why I'm acting weird about it. Um, oh, I wanted to show you really quick. I had a question on Instagram about um, this little bird that, this little item that is hanging out in my corner over here. I guess I can't really show you. Oh, yeah, I can. So lately, it's just been sitting right here. And it's hard to see what it is, but this is what it is. It's just a little glass bird. Ain't she cute? And here's some information about it, if you know what any of this means. TerraStudios.com. Okay, there you go. If you want to get a bird of your own, maybe TerraStudios.com still exists. I am just like obsessed with bird things. I just... You know, whenever I'm an old lady and people, you know, like want to get me presents, but they don't know what to get me bird stuff. That's, that's going to be, that's going to be my thing. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Um, so here we are. Ta-da. Okay. First of all, I want to share just in case like you get this deck or you have this deck and you are like the cardstock is pretty bad but the thing that really tripped me up about the cardstock was that the cards were uneven and so here's what I did I cut off like just a tiny fraction of the top and then rounded the corners with a corner punch seven millimeter was the corner punch size. And that's all I had to do was trim a tiny bit off the top um, consistently on a guillotine at the same point, every single card. And that made it even so that now it shuffles just fine. So just saying. Okay, let's do it. So first of all, Cosmic Tribe, if you've never seen it, there are a lot of penises in this deck. It's per personal growth. For me, I feel like for some reason just my brain is going to make more sense if I put this one. Okay. And then I'm probably just going to hold it up. Yeah, that'll work. Okay. Because getting a little bit of a glare here. Okay, cool. So I, um, <laughs> but this is the Unfair Comparisons Sylvain Made Me Do It edition because both of these decks, um, Margaret Peterson, like a lot of, I've seen it a lot over the years and um, I am curious about it because I'm starting to get into decks that like I have to, that require a little bit more thought, if that makes sense. Like, like you really have to spend time with with a deck like Margaret Peterson. It's not just like an immediate, oh, this is this card and this is what this card means. Like there's a lot of cards in this deck that are very abstract and it's gonna be kind of a daily draw, spend some time gazing upon its beauty kind of thing. You know what I mean? Also, so this is just like a different kind of deck for me. And so is this because I love the art style for sure. Um, I definitely love the art style, but no buts really. Um, or yeah, but I love the art style of this deck. So this isn't weird for me, but maybe I should just show you the backs while I'm babbling. Similar color schemes on the backs. That's interesting. <laughs> Um, but like I have come such a long way as far as just like my particular shadow work is men. <laughs> yep. That's what it is. So when I first started getting into tarot, I didn't even want to see human beings in my tarot decks. 
Uh, it, it took, it didn't take me a, a ton of time before I was co more comfortable with human beings, but like my very first decks were things like moon power, which is kind of like alien people. Um, and I was working a lot with wild unknown because it was just animals and I was comfortable with that. That was what I was most comfortable with is just animals and symbols. And then I started getting a lot of decks like Modern Witch that only had women in it, or if it had men, they were, you know, kind of only in the court cards. Like there weren't very many of them. I was able to accept a few men in my decks. And then I got to the point where I was totally cool with seeing men in my decks, but male nudity was never something that I was comfortable with. And to be honest, it's still not something I'm comfortable with. But this deck is, um, it is the most body positive deck that I have in my collection. It's photo, it's digital photo collage, but from 1998. This, this deck is from 2001. Um, digital photo collage from 1998. And it's got like very real, not photoshopped human beings in it. It has some size diversity not a ton. It doesn't have very much racial diversity at all. It is mostly white people. It's got some um, LGBTQIA diversity. Um, it has three lovers cards. It, um, yeah, you'll see. I'm, my words are not great today. So let's just start fucking flipping cards. How about that? <laughs> Most unfair comparison ever. But we're here for it. So me seeing like actual photos of naked men, everyone's naked in this deck, by the way. To my knowledge, the moon is the only card where someone is wearing, someone's wearing a dress in the moon card. But every other card, the people are naked. <laughs> oh, I just noticed that there's a dog in this card. I had seen the crocodile before, but I hadn't seen the dog. So me seeing like penises in my tarot decks and there's a lot of them in this deck a lot is is shadow work for me to be quite honest i'm working on it guys i'm working on it i'm gonna move these closer together just so i can actually fit the cards to the side since i'm gonna pick them up anyway so it doesn't really matter matter where they are And these are so interesting, like Cosmic Tribe. This one I've had for a couple of days and this one I just got yesterday. So I haven't spent much time with either of these decks. In fact, I haven't even been able to shuffle Margaret Peterson yet. And by the way, this cardstock is everything. I love it. I love this High Priestess card too on Margaret Pe Peterson. Love a full bush too. I mean, everybody has Everybody has body hair in this deck and everyone's naked and everyone's weird. And there's a lot of like piercings and tattoos and, and it's so 1998. This deck is so 1998. So I have something specific to say about this Emperor card. When I first saw this in, I think it was the flip through that Sylvain did. I was immediately upset because to me, I was like, my very first thought was, oh my God, he's just like flaunting his penis. He's just like framing it. He's just manspreading. <laughs> I thought all of those things and I was immediately like, you know, my breath started to speed up and I started feeling anxious. But then I thought, no, what he's doing is he is you know, he's so secure in himself that he's being vulnerable. Like, how much more vulnerable can you be to, like, expose <laughs> your, um, <laughs> your, um, bird in its nest? <laughs> genitals are weird. At the end of the day, genitals are weird no matter what. No matter what shape they take, they are weird. So why am I so uncomfortable with seeing them? So I'm trying to, this deck is going to heal me. That's all I'm saying. Like No pressure, no pressure, Cosmic Tribe, but you're going to heal me. 
as I suspected with Margaret Peterson, um, it's hard to tell in a flip through, like just what's happening, but it's very interesting artwork. I can tell it's been, and I've read through like the introductory chapters in like the little guidebook that comes with Margaret Peterson. Like I can show you, it's just like this little, this little dude. It's chunkier than a little white book. Kind of. I mean, it's basically little white book size, but it's it's got some good information in it. And you can tell, like, Margaret Peterson spent, she said in the guidebook that she spent 21 years working on this deck. I really like this Hierophant card. And there are three lovers cards in Cosmic Tribe. So we've got and one with two men and like a male guardian demon guy up here. <laughs> one with a man and woman. And the people in this deck are just so 1998, you know, uh, body modification subculture, which is something that I'm very familiar with. I, I grew up in that subculture, you know. I was almost a piercer. I was almost a part of this group. <laughs> I mean, of course, I have tattoos and piercings, but also a lot of pierced nipples in this deck. So it's, I feel immediately at home in, in the Cosmic Tribe environment, to be honest. <laughs> I really do. And Margaret Peterson, I'm really impressed by it. Um, I'm just, you know, I just got it yesterday. But, um, so I haven't really, I haven't even gotten to shuffle it yet. I'm going to do it on camera when we're done here because I'm really excited. <laughs> oh, no, wait, here's some clothes. Here's a skirt. And I, I think, I think we've got some drag queen vibes in the moon card and in this card, at least drag queen vibes. Sorry, I'm mostly just looking at Cosmic Tribe because that's the one that I'm most eager to work with right now. Whereas I think for me, um, Margaret Peterson's going to be a deck that I, it's going to be a slow, a slow growing, you know, it's going to be a slow grow deck for me, I think. I mean, I'm immediately intrigued by it for sure, but I think it's going to just, it's going to take me a minute to be able to wrap my head around it. I like how this wheel is like almost in the center. It really looks like it's the heart of this, of this person. And it looks like a flame. Like if you really get up in there. I've already edged this deck. I'm kind of happy with it. I use this um, warm gray marker so it's just kind of taupey I like it like you can almost like you might not even necessarily think that it's edged but it is <laughs> oh same gesture from these two people They're sort of standing with their arms out that's interesting because it's not like necessarily what you would normally see in a strength card. So I'm already just like, I flipped through this Cosmic Tribe deck several times in the like two days. I got it on Sunday and today's Tuesday. And I'm already just kind of like feeling more comfortable with the imagery. I haven't used it yet, like for daily draws or anything like that. I probably will start starting tomorrow because I pull my cards at night for the following day. This is just so impressive. Like we have the you know, like creation and destruction happening in the same card, you know? synthesis of the elements. <laughs> I kind of don't like this devil card, but whatever. 
maybe I, I feel like I could like it, maybe. I'm talking about this one. This one's interesting, the sort of like tower of TVs. See, drag queen vibes. I love this moon card. There's like the phases. I love both of these moon cards, but like, to be honest, every time I do one of these unfair comparisons, it's one deck that I'm pr primarily looking at. And for me, it's Cosmic Tribe right now. But this one's got so much happening in it. We've got the, I mean, it's like kind of a traditional moon card, but You've got the sort of like reflection, you've got the crustacean, the dog just like laying down here, and then the wolf and the person that's bound over here. It's very interesting. I love this weird face. It reminds me of Teletubbies. <laughs> I do, it is sort of helpful to me that like, even though there's a lot of naked men in this deck, they are, the gender expression of them feels neutral to me, if that makes sense. Masculinity in general is difficult for me. And Despite the fact that there's a ton of penis in this deck, there's not a lot of what I might consider to be masculinity. And uh, for lack of a better term, I'm saying masculinity because really I'm just saying what we in our society view as masculinity is what I really mean to say, if that makes sense. because you know the term masculinity shouldn't should be a neutral term all of the aces in cosmic tribe have this sort of eye somewhere on the card or not the same eye but it, you know that's part of it which i think is interesting and cool um it's a very thothy deck like this is a very thothy card to me but also oh my god it just this to me, Cosmic Tribe, feels like a deck that was like a bunch of club kids making a tarot deck together, you know? Some artist that was into tarot got together all of his club kid friends. <laughs> and I kind of I kind of love it. I haven't at all. I mean, again, I've had this deck two days and I've had this deck one. So the reason I'm comparing them to each other is because they're my two most recent acquisitions. I've gotten them both in May 2022. Um, what was I going to say? I, I was starting a thought and then I forgot. Starting a thought and then I forgot. <laughs> I can't remember. Maybe I'll grasp the thread. Color schemes are very similar in the wands in both of these decks. Interesting. Interesting. Just noticed there's this little owl on the like is that a donkey's head? Oh um okay I remember what I was starting to say. I have not read any of the guidebook of um Cosmic Tribe yet. And I did read the introductory chapters of Margaret Peterson today just because I happened to have the guidebook with me at work and I had some downtime. 
So in this deck, um, since it's Thothy, it is possible that Knight is supposed to be king in, um, cause it's princess, knight, queen, prince, which I, that's how Thoth works, right? Except it's really the knight is the king, but I, I'm sorry. I just, I can't compute that way. If something is called a knight, I'm going to see it as a knight. So, I mean, that's one of the reasons why I don't get along with Thoth. So I'm just saying that's the way that I organize this flip through. Night is night. In Margaret Peterson, as you can see, it is um, daughter, son, mother, father. Totally tank girl vibes, don't you think? Love the hairy armpits, because I myself have had hairy armpits for like over a decade now. Cards like this are, are still really difficult for me because <laughs> this guy is like, I don't know. <laughs> he's very guy to me. <laughs> he's, a, he's very much a dude. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Dudes are my shadow work. Masculinity is my shadow work. And I'm working on it because as Sylvain said in his last video, it might be interesting to work on your traumas. <laughs> like sometimes if imagery is difficult for you, it's because it could be helpful for you to, you know, exposure therapy is a thing. Like people get over phobias and fears by slowly introducing themselves to the thing that makes them irrationally afraid. And aren't we here to work on our psychological shit? So instead of me categorically saying, oh no, that has that deck has penises in it. I, I gotta get away. I said, bring on the dick deck. <laughs> and here I am. <laughs> Something I didn't would not think that I would say even six months ago. Well, I'm like, I'm in like, I don't want to sound like I'm fancy or anything, but I'm in sort of a an evolutionary space right now. Look at this little like salamander head situation. This kind of looks like an image from Curious Creatures. <laughs> I love this. I'm getting, oh, rock, locks, rock lobster vibes right there. I'm getting that. I'm getting some serious, some serious B-52s out of this image. I just, I feel like there's a soundtrack to this Cosmic Tribe tarot deck. I hate that I'm just like barely looking at Margaret Peterson right now, but it's something that it's going to take me a bit, you know, like this nine of cups. I mean, it's basically just like a little oyster, right? With a pearl. I guess that makes sense though for a nine of cups because you have to wait for that pearl to develop. It takes time just like this deck. You have to wait for it to develop. Similar color schemes. And these decks were um, released within three years of each other. Even though um, if Margaret Peterson was working on this deck for 21 years, that means she started working on it in 1980. So <laughs> I don't know why I'm thinking about this, but like the soundtrack, if you to listen to while using these decks are very different for, um, for Cosmic Tribe, you'd be listening to Chemical Brothers, Fat Boy Slim, Massive Attack, Tricky, um, Tool, like Lateralis Era tool. 
um, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, Juno Reactor, a lot of Juno Reactor. Oh my God, a lot of Juno Reactor. Um, and for Margaret Peterson, you'd be listening to... Hmm, a lot of like um, world music, you know, just stuff from everywhere, stuff that like feels spiritual, stuff in languages you don't speak because you can pretend it's the most spiritual shit ever when you don't know what they're saying. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so now we're on to feathers slash swords. I love this. Oh my God. Love the color scheme. Love this. Margaret Peterson, Three of Swords. Oh, wow. It's breathtaking. Truly breathtaking. I really don't like this Four of Swords. It just feels lazy compared to the other imagery in the deck. swords. Very interesting with the like computer circuitry as a six of swords, especially considering this is 1998. You know, like when computers were really just starting to take over and the internet was just starting to take hold for regular human beings. You know, it had been around for a while, but already by 1998. But I'm digging both of these decks for completely different reasons. Let's do, at the end of this, let's do like a little, we'll shuffle them both and do a card pull from both and interpret it like a reading. Shall we? I'm excited. Uh, this this nine of feathers kind of reminds me of like the color scheme reminds me of the cure. It's a very cure color scheme, which is an association that like I have not made nine of swords with the cure, but that makes sense because most of my favorite cure albums like Faith, Pornography, Seventeen Seconds, those are like my top three. Maybe Disintegration would beat out 17 seconds but like those albums are totally dark night of the soul kind of albums atmospheric dark yeah for some reason i'm thinking about a lot of music looking through these decks ah oh, look at this okay now i've switched to just looking at margaret peterson <laughs> that's amazing because you have like the feather that is, you know, the theme of the sword suit laying at the bottom of the card, but then you've got all of this growth coming out of it. This is a very hopeful Ten of Swords, which I like, but it's still got this sort of hot pink that kind of is a little bit tumultuous, at least in her choices for color schemes, because it's present here as well. And this is a much more, more of an anguish moment. Very cool. And this is just, oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to like, it's easier for me to see them in person. So I'm keep like getting them out of the shot. This kind of like, Gives me Henry Rollins vibes a little bit. He's totally a Knight of Swords too, Henry Rollins. If you were at all curious what I look like naked, it's kind of like this. Because <laughs> I have thick arms like she does. And uh, yeah, 
She's got sort of an hourglass figure, which I do as well. And long dark hair. Yeah, I do not have pierced nipples though. I mean, is that TMI to give you that information? <laughs> well, Lord knows I'm not gonna edit that. I don't like this Prince of Swords because he's just, he looks so young. I'm just not comfortable with it. Not comfortable because I just feel like he's too young. So cool. I love it. I mean, this artwork is cheesy. Like I'm not usually into digital collage, but if you give me digital digital collage from the beginning of digital collage, I'm into it because it's like so bad it's good in my opinion. There's like all four elements and we've got like the whole fortress situation going on here. This one you've got a snake. I'm just like so many like album covers are coming to mind. <laughs> like I'm getting de delight, um, the lovely, all the B-52s, cosmic thing. <laughs> I just, I want to listen to party music and look at penises. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Oh my god. Interesting because we have like the sort of rainbow moment that we're used to seeing in the Ten of Cups. I like these like jewels. I didn't realize that's what they were until just now. I'm slow. But I can be forgiven because I've only had this deck for two days. Similar vibes, I feel, between these two cards. Like, I can totally imagine that this guy is this guy. It's sort of covered in mud. Doing your thing, and you've got like a little doorway down here. Interesting. All right, well, let's shuffle these babies, shall we? I was really having a problem with this cardstock, but now that I've trimmed it, it doesn't really bother me as much because before it was uneven, so it would only shuffle in like clumps, you know? But now it's good. It shuffles like it should. It still sort of has... Like if you're familiar with um, Crow's Magic, it kind of has like a toothy, it's not as glossy as Crow's Magic, but it kind of has like a toothiness to the finish that's on the cards, like Crow's Magic does, if that makes sense. Although I've heard that there are different types of cardstock for Crow's Magic, so it might not translate if you have that deck, but it's got a little bit of a toothy finish on the cards, but this deck only cost me $20. So 
I'm not really mad at it for having crap cardstock, especially now that I fixed it. So it's just like, yeah, it's not the, it's kind of like nails on a chalkboard touching the surface of the cards, but that's actually going to, with time, it'll, that'll wear in a little bit. Even though I am getting some cards that are flying out, I'm trying to give it a good shuffle before I accept it. Okay, I'll accept that. Whatever that is, I'll accept it. We're going to do a little mini reading. Oh, I can't. I'm so excited to shuffle this. It's the cardstock is gorgeous on this. Margaret Peterson, this is going to be a good time. Yeah. Because it's very thin and flexible. It is, as Sylvain pointed out to me today, um, and he's completely right, it's the exact same cardstock as Tarot of Haunted House. It's like, it's a little hard to shuffle just because of how big these cards are. So I'm a little sad that it's, it's harder than I thought it was going to be. But it's because I do, I mean, not really, I kind of have medium sized hands, I think. They're not super small. Let's try, I wonder if I can shuffle them like, I don't know what you're supposed to call it, but I call it book style. I'm going to shuffle it like this. Oh yeah, that works. That works well. Okay, that might be how I'll shuffle this stuck. Because I don't think I want to trim it. Because I don't mind the borders. The borders feel very intentional to me, so I don't think I want to trim it. And the the backs are borderless, which I prefer. This is a very warm deck, Margaret Peterson. It's like a lot of like reds and yellows, very earthy, fiery tones. Yeah, that works pretty well, pretty well. I'm already getting like a little bit of chips on the edges just because I'm a rough shuffler. But I don't, I like the way that I shuffle. I like shuffling rough, okay? Deal with it. I like dick decks and rough shuffling. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry, guys. This shit sounds weird coming out of my mouth because I do identify as gray simple. message it doesn't surprise me that Margaret Peterson's having a little bit more of a hard time talking to me. Okay, let's flip these babies over, see what they have to say to us, shall we? Queen of Cups and Four of Cups. So in a deck full of dicks, we get a mermaid. <laughs> what do I feel about this Four of Cups? Like, it's hard. Abstract art is difficult for me. Like, I mean, it's almost like we've got a cloud situation happening here. We've got sort of the framing. I definitely feel apathetic towards this imagery. So, this is kind of like also giving me kind of an introduction to these decks. It's like, and Queen of Cups, actually my very first card pull from this deck was the Strength card. Something else and Queen of Cups. I don't remember what the, thir the third card was, but it was Strength and Queen of Cups for sure. So this, this card has already been very talkative with me. I think, and also I think of the Queen of Cups as the tarot reader. So I think I'm going to read Willie, Willie, Willie well, really well with Cosmic Tribe Tarot. 
And this Four of Cups kind of tells me that, like, there's going to be a lot of imagery in Margaret Peterson. And I know that already intellectually. There's going to be a lot of imagery in Margaret Peterson that's going to take me a while to get to know. I'm not going to be able to take it all in at once. I'm going to get overstimulated with it. I'm going to be understimulated by it at other times. It's it's not going to be an all the time thing, but it has something to offer. It's like that fourth cup in the RWS, you know, it has something to offer me and I won't always be able to take that other cup, but that's okay. Does that make sense? So I'm seeing this as immediately, this is going to be, this deck's going to be a great reader for me. It's going to open up my mind to, you know, <laughs> new imagery, new possibilities. It's, it's going to be a gateway for me to walk through. And so is this, but it's going to take time is what I'm getting from this. So I'm excited to work with both of these new decks and I'm glad you came to watch this very unfair comparison. Thanks guys. Bye.